Hello, I am Pastor Lori Carter, and I would like to welcome you to St. John's Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining us for worship. Today is Consecration Sunday. Once a year, we set aside a day to formally indicate our commitment of financial resources to this church and its mission. Take a few moments to recall the many ways the ministries of St. John's have impacted your life. Your commitment gives us the ability to support our members and meet the needs of our neighbors here in Salisbury and around the world. If you have not done so already, click on the annual campaign button on our website. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Together, we worship and celebrate God's abundance in our lives. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds to offer our grateful response to God's free gifts of love, grace, and mercy. May you be blessed.
Please stand as you are able and turn to face the cross of Christ, which is behind me. Let's go to God in confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, let us toge together let us acknowledge our failures to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly before you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuse and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us to do. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. I am Pastor James Demmel, one of the pastors here on staff at St. John's, and just wanted to give a brief word of welcome to all who are visiting with us today. In this time of the year, we are rounding out our uh, financial stewardship season. Today is Consecration Sunday, and I'll have a few words about that in a second. But what I wanted to start with as an announcement is, are these green connection cards that are in your hymn? If you haven't uh, filled one of these out, whether it's been recently or in a while, we encourage you um, to fill them out, especially if you're visiting with us. We'd love to get to know you better, and this helps us to do that. But for those of us who have been worshiping here for a while, updating these every once in a while is great because emails change, addresses change. So if you feel like you're missing out on our emails, which there are an abundance of that come weekly, please do take a moment to update your email address or address on these connection cards and turn them in to the usher. Our next announcement is that in two Sundays from today, on the 23rd, that will be God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. That's a special Sunday we set apart each year for the congregation to engage in a congregation-wide service project. So we think about giving and using our gifts back on that Sunday. And we have two projects that we can to do. First, on the 22nd, um, we were participating in a City of Salisbury program called Block Works. What Block Works does is it picks up a block in town here, and uh, volunteers come and they help work to revitalize that block. So that'll be on Saturday the 22nd. And on Sunday the 23rd, after worship, we're going to gather after worship at Happy's Farm, and there'll be uh, congregational projects for all ages, kids, adults, um, and in between to, to engage in on that Sunday. So mark your calendars for that. And last but certainly not least, two things, actually. First, uh, prayers today with um, Rob DeRocher, our deacon, our minister of music. Rob is ill with COVID this weekend, so... I think he's doing well, he's just not here. And if you haven't also noticed, our choir is a little bit thin today um, as well because the outbreak probably happened somewhere in music and song. And so today, one, uh, one change that is happening is that instead of the anthem during the consecration, we are going to be um, using the hymn form of that, and that is hymn 685 in your bulletin. And when we get there again, I'll remind you of that. So prayers for Rob, prayers for all who are out today with COVID. Um, last but certainly not least, today is Consecration Sunday, as I've already mentioned, and so um, today is a special Sunday that we take apart to think about the ministries of St. John's, to celebrate them, and to ensure that they continue to give back in the future. And so as part of our worship today, we will be passing the plates during the offertory time, and we'll be inviting you to put your pledge cards in the plates. Now, some of you may have already done that online, and that's wonderful, wonderful. but for those who haven't, um, you're invited to give a pledge card um, today to think about your gifts, whether they be your time, your talent, or your treasure. We need all of those things to keep the ministries of St. John's going. If you need a pledge card, if you don't have one, our ushers are available in the back, so just flag one down um, if you need a card. And with that, we will continue our service with the readings. The first reading is from 2 Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master. Because of him, the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Armenians, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samurai, he could cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. 
But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go, wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten men made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God? except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Word of God, word of life. You, God. you may be seated. Do you know that cultivating and expressing gratitude can make a huge impact in your life? There has been significant research done on the effects of gratitude, and according to Harvard Health Publishing, most studies support an association between gratitude and an individual's well-being. Expressing sincere gratitude can help you have more positive emotions. It can improve your mental and your physical health. And it can help you have stronger relationships with God and with each other. Today's gospel lesson is about gratitude and the importance of praising God and thanking Jesus. The story begins as Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem. 
And somewhere between Samaria and Galilee, ten men with leprosy approached him. To get a better grasp of this story, it is helpful to recall or perhaps gain a fuller understanding of just what leprosy was then. In ancient times, leprosy had physical, spiritual, and social implications. Leprosy was a debilitating skin disease that, according to one commentator, made people look like a dead corpse. It was horrible. The disease often caused disfigurement of people's faces, of their bodies, and their extremities. It was painful, not only physically, but also emotionally and relationally. People with leprosy were considered ritually unclean. They could not go to the temple to worship. It was believed that they could transfer their uncleanliness to others. Consequently, people with leprosy were isolated from their families and excluded from society. In our lesson, the ten lepers were outcast. They were far enough away to be socially and appropriately distanced from the travelers along the road, yet they were near enough to call out to Jesus for mercy. Of those ten men, we know at least one was identified as a Samaritan. Jews and Samaritans were enemies with centuries of bad history festering between them. The hatred they held for each other was fierce. Yet, through the common bond of leprosy and rejection by their families and by society, they lived among each other, banding together to plead for what they so desperately needed. It is important to know these details to understand the miraculous nature of the events especially for the Christians hearing this story for the first time. Imagine with me how stunned they must have been, Jews and Samaritans living in the same space, crying out together to Jesus and pleading for mercy. And then Jesus sending them away to the priest. That meant... They were cleansed. Ten men leaving, yet one returning, praising God and falling at Jesus' feet. And as Scripture tells us, in a sentence all it, its own, and it was a Samaritan who did that. Imagine just for a moment the early Christians looking at each other in shock and disbelief. Much has been written about the nine who did not return. I often think they get a bad rap. I believe that there is scriptural evidence to indicate the ten believed in Jesus, and that he had the power to help them. For the text reads, they all approached Jesus. They all called Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They all obeyed Jesus' command to go show themselves to the priest, except, except the one. 
but it is by faith that they believed that they will be cleansed if they follow Jesus' instructions. Without any evidence of cleansing, all ten men began to make their way to the temple. And then in verse 16 it says, as they went, they were cleansed. Now we know from the story that nine of them continued to the temple knowing that once they were declared clean by the priest, they could be reunited with their families and they could re-engage with society. And oh, what a wonderful day that would be in their lives. They followed Jesus' instruction and they received what they had asked. Yet, we can learn from the one who returned. He too saw that he had received what he had asked. But when he was cleansed, he immediately returned to Jesus, the source of his healing. He saw the miraculous work Jesus had done. The Samaritan saw Jesus as more than just a healer. He saw God's healing power in Jesus' actions. He knew that Jesus was the Son of God. And his response? Go to Jesus and show his deep gratitude. You know, there is something amazing when we realize that God has provided for us when we ask something of God. Have you ever had that experience? I'm not necessarily talking about material things, though it could be so. What I'm talking about are things like when we ask for strength for another day when we are absolutely exhausted? How about when we ask for relief when we are in pain or comfort when we are afraid? Or maybe it is seeing changed behavior because the heart of a loved one for whom we have prayed, their heart has softened. It is quite easy to get caught up in the details of life, doing what God asks us to do. The pace of life we live often does not allow us to immediately reflect on God's faithfulness. It is easy to get distracted or forget that all that we are and all that we have comes from God. I wonder, do we pause for a few moments to acknowledge God and thank God on the spot for what God has done or is doing in our lives? Or do we wait until Sunday and think that that is sufficient? In the translation we generally read aloud on Sunday mornings, at the end of verse 16 it says, He, referring to the Samaritan, thanked him. He thanked Jesus. Author, preacher, and teacher, Caroline Lewis reminded me this week that the Greek word used in that verse is better translated in the present tense as thanking him. 
The Samaritan showed gratitude immediately through his words and actions as if being in a constant state of gratitude. The Samaritan did not offer Jesus a once and done thank you. And we know the last verse that the Samaritan's faith-filled response took him beyond being cleansed. His faith made him well. Gratitude as a way of being. Gratefulness expressed immediately and frequently by praising God and thanking Jesus as our response to all that we are and all that we have received through the endless love and grace of God. A family I know is teaching their children to see their whole life through the lens of gratitude. Some of you may be acquainted with the concept of roses and thorns. This family sets aside time at each evening meal to go around the table and each person shares something that they were grateful for that day, a rose. After that is done, they go back around the table and each person shares something that they struggled with that day, a thorn. And then they share and give thanks for the ways they saw God at work, even in the challenges and harder moments of life. So how do we say thank you to God? By living a life that is pleasing to God, not to gain anything, but as our response to God's abundance in our lives. We are to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind, and we are to love our neighbor as ourself. Practically speaking, we are to attend church, to worship, to serve, to share meals together, to pray, and to give. In her book, Help, Thanks, Wow, Anne Lamont writes, the two best prayers I know are help me, help me, help me, and then thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a pretty good summation of our gospel lesson today. While it may not be the only prayer we are to say, it certainly is a great start. Today, as you have heard, is the day that is set aside for us to give back to God what God has entrusted to us. For giving to the church is one way to express our gratitude for the many ways God has blessed us as individuals and as a church. The Samaritan modeled for us gratitude in its fullness. His encounter with Jesus transformed his life. Our encounters with Jesus can transform our lives and the lives of others as we respond by expressing our thanks to God with our time, our talents, and our financial resources. Showing gratitude is important. It is important to the giver. It is important 
to the receiver, and it is important to God. May we be faithful in big ways and in small ways to express our gratitude to God and to one another. Thanks be to God. Now gathered as God's people across time and space, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Whenever we talk about giving in a Lutheran context, my theological senses start to get a little bit wary. The whole movement of the Lutheran Reformation, as many of us know, was based on the fact that God's grace and God's love is free of charge. We don't have to earn it. 
We don't have to work for it. We don't give to earn God's love. Those things are free. God gives them to us and will continue to give them to us time and time again, free of charge. But in this moment of consecration, we recognize that we give back out of a joyful and full heart, full of God's love, remembering what God has done for us. We give back. Consecration Sunday is a moment where we take and we set apart our gifts and we designate them to God, designate them as holy. This Sunday in particular, we set ourselves aside. We remember that there are many gifts, finances, time, treasure, all of those things we give back to God. We need all of those things to keep the ministries of St. John's going in the future. And so as the ushers come forward in just a moment, uh, you're invited to place your pledge cards if you have them with you in the plates, and we're going to present them to God. After the presentation, the doxology, I'll, uh, you are invited to join me in a responsive prayer. And right now, I'm going to invite David Horde forward. David Horde is the chair of our uh, stewardship campaign this year, and so David has done a lot of good work getting our congregation ready to, for Consecration Sunday and to celebrate this moment. And so I thought it only fitting that he share a reading with us. Thank you. A reading is Hebrews. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Word of God, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Let us join together in prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us now pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, deacons, and all who serve in your ministries. Inspire the leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, for times of planting and times of harvest. Break down those boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your good creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. God, we lift up especially those continuing to recover in the wake of Hurricane Ian, and for those in Somalia suffering under severe drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those who are marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. O oh Lord our God, we continue to ask that you watch over our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer, especially those we lift before you now, silently or aloud. Jim. Bill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you promise that weeping may come with the night, but joy in the morning. We thank you for those who have died in faith, especially those we name before you now. O God, in the fullness of time, gather us around your table of great joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks and praise, for you have given to us so wonderfully. God, we ask that you continue to inspire us, that we might live lives of gratitude and service to you. God, we consecrate our gifts before you this morning, and ask that you may use them to further your ministries here in St. John's, in Salisbury, and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
we go out this morning with full and grateful hearts, I hope that you all have empty stomachs. We have a consecration Sunday brunch over in Peeler Hall with an abundance of food, and so you all are invited to gather over there and partake in the brunch. And now let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.